Welcome to the Real Estate Raw Show, hosted by Joe Mendoza. So you're still on the fence about investing in real estate. Well, on today's show, ladies and gentlemen, we will be talking about alternative different kinds of investments in real estate. Yes, there are alternatives instead of buying the brick and mortar, dealing with tenants, termites, and headaches, like some other folks used to say, there are crowdfunding, there are REITs, there are investing in mortgage notes. So we're going to hear it from a person, a wonderful woman who wrote several books on this type of alternative investing. And full disclaimer, check with your CPA, check with your tax guy. We're not giving any kind of that kind of advice. So if you have any questions, seek your experts, seek your counsel, the people that help you out with your personal finances, taxes, and portfolio. So let's enjoy the show. Hi guys, Joe Mendoza here in sunny San Diego. Welcome to my show. Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, and sharing the good word. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have Barbara Freebird coming from the Bay Area. She has an MBA, multiple book author, Invest and Beat the Pros, How to Get Rich Without Winning the Lottery, an encyclopedia called Personal Finance. Welcome to the show, Barb. How are you? Joe, I am thrilled to be on here. Real estate is one of my favorite topics to talk about. Awesome. Awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. Ready? I'm ready to go. All right, let's do it. So before real estate, Let's take the audience back. What were you doing before real estate? I was actually doing real estate out of the crib. So let me share with you how real estate got injected into my veins. That sounds good. Let's do it. My dad was a self-made man and grew up in abject poverty, you know, selling newspapers on the corner at age 10 And he had multiple businesses when I was a little girl. And he probably, about when I got born, started investing in real estate. And so he had a real estate company and he ended up hiring agents as well as doing a lot of flipping. So on our Sundays, you know, most people watch TV, watch the football game, went to the park not us. We hopped in the car and drove around and looked at real estate. So that was my Sunday. As a kid, didn't really love it. But, you know, looking back, I have fond memories. That's great. That's great. And then you said you were doing some personal flips yourself and a real estate investor. And today I actually want to talk about some other things you mentioned about REITs, crowdfunding, maybe even some mortgage note investing. What kind of caused you to transition into that arena versus a regular fix and flips, kind of like what your dad was doing? That is a wonderful question. As you mentioned, Joe, when I was younger, I bought real estate, fixed it up, resold it. I kept some real estate. I rented it out and, you know, managed the tenants. I also was actually an investment portfolio manager for a real estate holding company. So as the CFO and investment manager of that company, I oversaw the financials, although not hands-on, and I oversaw the manager as well. So if any of you out there have ever actually done real estate investing, you know what I'm talking about. It's a lot of work. It's really a lot of work. The last piece of real estate I owned was a condo in San Diego where we used to live. And the tenants, when they moved out, fine, you know, that happens. I'm prepared for it. I had the reserves to um, continue to hold the property. But we went in and it was totally infested with fleas. Wow. And it was so disgusting that 
then we fumigated it ourselves because back in the day we didn't have a whole lot of money and we did a lot as much as we could by ourselves. We fumigated it and then we were at the point of re-renting it when my husband and I said, you know, this is enough is enough. And we were just tired. So despite the fact that we love real estate, we like the income that it can generate, we just didn't want to spend our time doing what is required to manage real estate. And that's when I transitioned into putting um, our family's real estate investments in what are called real REITs, which are real estate investment trusts. And I have since investigated, written about, learned a lot about real estate crowdfunding, real estate notes, um, and other, other forms of real estate lending. So that was my story. That's great. That's great. Now, how hard was it to break into that different uh, type of investment? Or did you know somebody who knew somebody? I'm not sure I get what you're asking me, Joe. Could you rephrase it? Like you, you started studying about how to invest in crowdfunding or REITs. And so were you introduced um, to a group, a company, or you just started like, um, you know, going online and started in, um, investing your money online? I started out with REITs because when I transitioned away from actual real estate into REIT investing, there was no crowdfunding. There weren't the platforms that are out here today. And so, yes, I had to learn about it. And actually, you reminded me of something. I've been a student of investing, of real estate, of the markets for decades. I just, I just love it. And I've learned so much, not only through my schooling, but my, also my own study. And so when I started getting into REITs, I remember I went to a seminar about REIT investing where they went through the entire what is a REIT and how do you get started and what does it mean and how do you get paid. And for those of you that have not invested in real estate investment trusts, I will give you the Cliff Notes version. Somebody else does the work. They buy a bunch of real estate, they manage it, and then they put it together in what's called a security and those securities are typically traded on the stock exchange with a ticker symbol, just like a stock, and you go in and buy them. And so it's not hard. You get a cash flow from that investment. And it's important to, to understand the tax consequences of that investment. And what I wanted to explain, Joe, is there are... Um, really diversified REITs where you can invest in one fund, like VNQ, which is Vanguard's diversified REIT ETF, and it owns all different types of real estate. So with one fund, you can actually get in there and you're diversified across the real estate spectrum. But if you want to tweak it a little and you want to get into a little bit of the real estate sector investing, you can drill into say healthcare REITs or lodging REITs or office buildings or self storage or all of those have sectors. So you can be a little creative if you think one area is gonna outshine the others and deploy a little bit more capital to that. So that's, that's the REIT picture. And today you don't have to go to a seminar, go to the NAR REIT website, which is the REIT website, and Joe can put that up there for you in his show notes, for and sure. read a couple of articles, and you're pretty much good to go. Now, for the audience that's still not too familiar with it, so it's almost like investing in a stock, right, and right. publicly traded, so you could go in and out of it within 24 hours, buy and sell, and yeah. trade it just like a normal stock. I'm glad you mentioned that because we didn't really delve into the fact that investing in real estate is not liquid. Unlike the stock market where you, you know, like Joe said, you can buy and sell in a day for most uh, stocks. 
if you buy a house and you want to resell it the next day, it's not going to happen. Whereas Good. with a REIT, you can do that. And that's, that's one of the beauties of REIT investing in and of itself. You asked me about like crowdfunding and note funding. Those are also less liquid. Now, which do you prefer or why, what are some of the biggest differences between the three? Okay. Well, crowdfunding is similar to REIT investing in that a syndicator, a guy or a gal, and it's typically a guy um, who has some real estate background, will get together. They'll gather money from investors like you and me. And sometimes there are opportunities for small investors. And then other deals, they require you to be an accredited investor, which means you just need to have a high income or a high net worth. And so they buy up, they, they get your, they take your money, they buy up a bunch of different types of real estate. They're usually focused. So there are some crowdfunding platforms that are focused on commercial uh, real estate, others that are focused on rentals. And each of the platforms is a little different in what they offer, in how they invest. And some of the big names are Peer Street, um, Grant, uh, realty shares and um, oh, just so many more. And what you do is when you invest in those platforms, you have to do a little more due diligence than you do with a REIT because you want to know that the person that is, they're not like a publicly trade it like you'll see with the REITs that you buy and sell in the stock market. The crowdfunding platforms like um, the, P the Peer Street, the Realty Fund and the others, you want to know who is running those. I was approached to invest in one once and I looked at the background of the guys that were running it and it didn't smell right. They didn't seem like they had the chops that would be required to run these big deals because they have to vet the properties. They have to buy them. They have to make sure there's cash flow. And they also have to make sure that they can sell them ultimately at a profit. Because otherwise, you know, why do you invest? You invest to make money. That's right. So when you're investing in crowdfunding, and a lot of people like those type of platforms, you really have to understand what you're investing in read the documents, read the boring SEC regulations so you know the risks that you are taking. They are risky. And your money typically in crowdfunding platforms needs to be tied up for a while. And they'll tell you the range. It could be five years. It could be 10 years. So don't put the money you need for a down payment in your own house next year in a real estate crowdfunding platform. That's great, Barb. Now, mortgage note investing, you mentioned that as well as maybe the third one. Tell us a little bit about that for the audience. Well, that's another way to capture real estate returns without actually buying real estate. Now, when you buy a property, where I buy a property, we typically take out a mortgage because we don't have 300, 500, a million dollars sitting under our mattress to pay for that real estate. So we go to the bank and we take out a loan. So let's say there's a $500,000 property that we buy and we take out a loan for $400,000. That loan is secured with a mortgage on the property. So the bank gives us the money and they have a claim on that house if we don't pay it back. They are what's called the first lien holder. And then the bank decides they don't want to be a mortgage holder. They want to get rid of that loan. And so they will sell that loan. And that is called a mortgage note. And the same philosophy goes with um, office buildings. You can invest in notes for office buildings or for individual houses. And 
you can buy different types of real estate notes. And when you buy a note, and I'll tell you where you can find out about these two. When you buy a note, then you're the bank and they make the payments to you, which is so nice. Every month they're paying their income, their um, principal payment back plus the interest on top and you get that steady cash flow. That's great. Have you done a lot of these or have you done more of the other types of investments? I have not. I have not done these myself because they require a lot of due diligence as well. You have to do your homework and you have to research them. You have to check out the buyers. You have to understand the risk of default because guess what, Joe, if they stop making their payments and they default on that loan, you may end up owning the real estate, which is not why you got into note investing in the first place. So again, a lot of due diligence. I actually just wrote an article on this very topic on Barbara Friedberg Personal Finance. You can read all about it there. You can also, though, there is another platform that I think is kind of interesting. It's called Ground Floor. Yes. And they invest in real estate notes and you can invest with them and get kind of like a read, a basket of real estate notes. So you kind of spread your risk around. I think that's kind of a, a more doable option than going out hitting up the banks. Do you have any notes you want to sell me? Knocking on doors, joining real estate groups, that sort of thing. Have you any experience with the other ones like Fundrise or Rich Uncles, uh, anything like that? I have not personally invested in those. And it's not because I don't like them. And it's not because I don't think there is value there and there is an opportunity to make money there. I think there probably is. And actually, Ian uh, Ippolito, I don't know if you, do you know him, Joe? That name sounds kind of familiar, but I, I don't think I personally know him. He has a wonderful website that reviews all of the crowdfunding platforms. And the thing that I like about his website is that it is extremely transparent. He's not in it to make a buck. He's in it to get together with people that are interested in these platforms. He even has a private group that you can join. So in talking about investing in real estate crowdfunding, there are some wonderful opportunities. You have to do your homework, see what you're investing in, who's running the fund, how long you tie up your money, um, what are the risks? Because every investment has a risk. And why haven't I done that? It gets down to the simple equation of where I want to put my time. So right now, this stage in my investing career, my individual investing is very simple and my interests are elsewhere. I'm not looking to manage a big portfolio of stocks or of real estate or of crowdfunding. And I typically invest in index funds, passive investing, and REITs falls into that category. I'm working a lot on my business, which takes me a lot of time with two websites and a full-time freelance writing um, plate. And at some time in the future, I may delve into those investments when I have more time to do so. Now, being in real estate, like most of your life or all your life, you know, and you've seen several cycles, is there anything that you might want to share with the audience? Any words of caution or advice or encouragement that would you would say to them right now? That, Joe, you know exactly what to ask because... <laughs> I flash back to times when I was overseeing, when I was the portfolio manager and I was overseeing the real actual real estate investors. And this, the staff was looking for real estate to buy for the company. And there was a period 
where when they were evaluating the properties and the price you had to pay and the likelihood of the return, there was nothing to be found. And the reason is, if you don't buy right, if you pay too much for a property, you're not going to get cash flow and you're not going to be able to sell it for a profit. So you have to do, you have to understand the financials of whatever individual property you are buying to make sure that the price you are paying for the property, the cost of maintaining that property, the expected rent, and the return on that investment makes the price you're paying worthwhile. And yes, there are cycles. There are periods where it's difficult to find real estate to buy because it is very expensive. There are other periods like, I don't know how many of you remember 2008, <laughs> where we had a huge bust in our economic cycle due to subprime mortgages and that shot down the cost of real estate across the country, that was an ideal time to buy real estate. So like every investment, gold, stocks, real estate, bonds, it is cyclical. And there are times when it's more expensive and times when it is lesser expensive. And additionally, there are places where you can do a great job buying and managing a real estate portfolio and other geographic locations where it's going to be tough. Like the places that Joe and I live. I live in the Bay Area. He lives in Southern California. And real estate's very expensive there, so it's tough to get into that market. But yes, real estate is cyclical. And so if you are an individual real estate investor, you need to understand what cycle you're in. And you have to be patient. If there's nothing to be found that works, you may be better off sitting, sitting the cycle out till, till the asset class corrects and takes a drop. That's awesome. Great words of advice, Barb. Any last uh, information you want to share? Best way to get a hold of you for the audience? Yes. I loved being a guest on your show, Joe, this was so fun talking about real estate. You can find me at Barbara Friedberg Personal Finance, Robo Advisor Pros, on my YouTube channel, on Twitter. I have a lot of real estate articles on Barbara Friedberg Personal Finance. And I also have a free gift for you there if you sign up under the free tab. So I would love to have people contact me, visit my websites, visit my YouTube channel. I welcome emails from people and I love to talk real estate. Thank you so much for having me on, Joe. Oh, and I almost forgot, I am a regular panelist on Money Tree Investing Podcast. Every week I'm there to discuss the guests with the host Kirk Chisholm and some other smart people. So after you subscribe to Joe's podcast, if you're looking for more broader investment information, stop by Money Tree Investing Podcast. You're the best, Thank you Barb. Thank so much Thank for having me on. Thank you so much for being on our show. We really, really appreciate you and we wish you well. Thank you. Same to you. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I hope you learned as much as I did or more. So guys, look at the comment thread. If you've seen something, heard something, want to learn more about something, please put it on the comment link below. If you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and smash that bell to hear the latest and greatest on the show. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram. I'm putting this channel together to hopefully add incredible value to you. And if you want to learn more about investing, you're new to investing, I highly recommend this book, Flex with a Plex. Also, this book, if you're having some challenges, as you can see, everybody on the show had some kind of adversity, including yours truly. So I shared a lot of that 
on making a comeback, giving you some incredible tips to make a comeback. So get either one, flex with a plex, or make it a comeback. If you want to get more tips, go ahead and go to JoeMendoza.com. Again, subscribe, share, like, make a comment below. I really, really appreciate you. Want to add incredible value and wish you all the best in your success in real estate and in life. Take care. Our company is not responsible for the success or failure of your business decisions relating to any information presented by our company or our company programs, products, and or services.